Hi! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to do this video because I missed last week, I didn't do one, and I kind of miss talking about what's been going on. So, um, hi, it's Sarah. Obviously, you are on Sarah Sprague's channel, if you didn't know that. Um, and this is the end of my 20th and 21st week on Remote Year. Uh, and for those of you who haven't watched one of my videos before, I am traveling uh, around the world for a year uh, through a program called Remote Year. I am working remotely full time. I am living in a different country every month. Remote Year sets us up with an apartment, a co-working space, and lots of other amenities um, in each country. Um, that's enough of the remote year spiel because most people watching this are just my friends and family and they know it by now. But if you have more questions about how it works, feel free to post them in the comments. Um, so what's going on since my last video? Okay, so my last video, I was on a side trip that me and a couple of remote year friends had planned to Siem Reap, Cambodia. Um, Siem Reap might've been my favorite place I visited so far. Um, I just felt like it was such a unique vibe. Um, some of the things we did were absolutely beautiful, but just like the country overall has such an interesting history and yeah, I loved it. Um, so I did that, um, then spent the last two weeks in, back in Vietnam where I was spending for the month. Um, what did we do? Got back from Siem Reap. Um, oh, I went on a, um, weekend trip hike to northern Vietnam, an area called Sapa, S-A-P-A, um, and just did it a beautiful, a beautiful hike. Um, it's actually made me realize that um, I really like spending time outdoors more than I knew before coming into remote year. And just the act of like hiking kind of lets me, it's kind of like an active, like physically active <laughs> meditation for me. Um, I spent the weekend just walking around, um, it was raining the first day, which almost made it even more beautiful. Uh, I almost, well, I wanted to do my video there because the background was so pretty, but I was kind of just in such like a calm and meditative state that I just wanted to let that go without talking too much. So I guess I'll just have to remember those backgrounds in my mind. <laughs> I didn't even take any selfies at all. Um, so did that and then went in to Hanoi to spend the last full week in Hanoi, which I honestly loved. Like a lot of people didn't, Hanoi wasn't like their favorite city because it's really loud, it's really smelly, all these things. But I think be, having lived in New York for three years before remote year, I honestly didn't realize any of that that much. And I just really liked the city because I felt like there was this energy to it. Like it was so alive and it didn't, I already said this in a previous video, but it was just, it's just more um, down to earth than the like fancy things. Like I don't think I went to a single like actual sit down restaurant. Maybe like I went to like three sit down restaurant meals the whole month. Other than that, I just like sat on stools and ate um, pho on, for literally like $1.50. Um, it, it, like it'd be like 40 dong, something, 40,000 dong. Um, and that those are the meals I ate. So it's just like people just like living their life, not putting on airs, like not trying to like, yeah, I don't know. I just liked it. So that was uh, the last two weeks in Hanoi, which means I'm done with my fifth month, my fifth country, and you are seeing, yeah, not a great <laughs> background today. I'm sorry about that. Um, this is the inside of my apartment in Chiang Mai. Um, I was, in my mind, wanted to wait until I had another good background, but I didn't want that to mean I miss another week because I'm sad that I missed last week. Um, so this is what you get, this nice little burgundy thing. Um, this is my first month where I'm living by myself. Um, I didn't realize how much I've been missing personal space, to be honest. As soon as I got into this apartment, I kind of like felt this like readiness to like take on this month and figure out what I want to focus on and just like, just this calm. And so I really think it's reminding me to like, it's, like, I feel like I've been leaning into the roommates because I really want to make true relationships with people on remote year. Um, and so I've been saying, you know, I'm always happy to have roommates in my preferences and things like that. But I think moving forward, I might just like, you know, just tell myself it's okay to want personal space and there's other ways for me to connect with people um, if this is gonna like bring me balance and clarity. So we'll see how the rest of the month goes. But so far, I'm really happy to be in Chiang Mai. Um, I'm trying to think about like what specifically to talk about from the last two weeks because honestly I've had so much so much on my mind um just in terms of like 
what I'm working on, what's been exciting, what I'm learning. I wanna at some point talk about, I've been working like half night shift hours, um, which have been mostly going well. Um, basically, I try to get a lot of my work done during the day, but then obviously, since most of my team is back in New York, I want to talk to them a little bit throughout the week. So I've been having meetings with them from like 9 p.m. to midnight here, which is like 9 a.m. to noon at home, or it's actually only a lot, 11 hours difference. Um, so that has been, honestly, it's I'm grateful that I can do that because a lot of people are full night shifting. So they're working like 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, I think that'd be really rough. Um, but I'm, so I'm partially night shifting. I thought I would like it more than I do, to be honest. I thought it would be great because it's like, you get to do all this stuff during the day, you get the day hours, and then you have to work at night. But what I'm finding is that on one hand, it's almost making me feel like I'm working even more than normal because like I work a little bit in the morning, I'll work a little bit in the afternoon, and then I have to like join calls again at night. So it's kind of like my work is bleeding all into my life a little bit more. Um, and then also, um, your brain after living like a whole day is like tired. <laughs> so it's actually really hard to do a bunch of stuff during the day. And then like at 9 PM be like, cool, I'm going to join some work calls now. Um, so I've definitely been trying to find the balance there of like, how can I still do activities and get the most out of the city during the day and still be like mentally ready to work at night. So I'm still figuring that out. Um, on the flip side, it's fun to work night hours purely because like anytime you do something different, I feel like you learn something unexpected, just like pushing your mind and your bound, like and what's normal, like changing your routine. So like, I'm happy to be doing it because I feel like by the end of the four months, I'll maybe at least take one or two things that I liked out of the night shift. Um, and hopefully take those forward but I thought that maybe I would like it so much that like oh I'll always work slightly shifted hours and since engineers are in different time zones or whatever but I don't think that's the case <laughs> um and then I think the next thing I want to talk about last thing since I know we're starting to get to the time limit that people are able to listen to me and not get totally bored um is I just finished this book um it's called Buddha's Brain um, and it was, it's basically about breaking down what was special about Buddha's brain and just like in general, like the principles of Buddhism and how we can apply them to our everyday life. So um, people who know me probably are not surprised that's like a typical nerdy book that I would like to read. I've just become really interested in being aware of like why I'm thinking certain things and why I'm feeling certain ways. And the more I go into that understanding of myself, I feel like I've like become just like calmer in life and like f my emotions fluctuate less between extremes and they're kind of more just um yeah just more calm um and at peace so I I read the book I, I loved it um I would really recommend it and one of the things that's really sticking with me is they had this idea of the two darts so the middle of the book is all about suffering and understanding why like what causes suffering to us as humans um, and basically my takeaway is one, most of, the, well, my main takeaway, and that's kind of, sorry, this is what the two darts brings up is that, um, most of our suffering is actually all emotional and mental and it's self-inflicted. So their example is, uh, let's say something truly, uh, let's say something bad happens. Um, let's say you hear your good friend talking negatively about you. The first dart is just that initial, you hear it, obviously that's sad, that's gonna hurt you. Like your initial gut reaction of like, that's sad. You can also say like, you you hurt yourself. Like let's, this is almost a better idea. You hurt yourself, you fall, you trip over, um, you stub your toe in your bed. And the immediate pain, like that's the first dart. Obviously you're gonna suffer a little, you don't need to get rid of that suffering. But the second dart is everything that goes on in your mind related to that incident. Oh, I always stub my toe on the on the bed. Why am I such an idiot? Why do I have to be so clumsy? Why can't I be more graceful? Um, oh, this is gonna hurt now for the next week. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna be able to work out tomorrow? If I can't work out tomorrow, I'm gonna be off my whole routine. Then I'm not gonna look good uh, in my dress at my friend's wedding in two months and no one is even gonna wanna like ask me to dance. That was a stupid. But anyway, you get my point. This small thing happens, You're it's okay to suffer a little bit at that point. You can't really control it, that's natural. That's the first dart. But the second dart 
is all things coming from our mind that we don't need to think, that's completely made up and controlled by us, and that actually ends up being more painful than the first dart. Why do we do that to ourselves? And a lot of times, also, the second dart actually never even was preceded by a first dart. You could have made the whole thing up in your head, worrying about what people are thinking about you, what might happen at work, all of these things, reading into things that didn't actually ever have a first dart that really happened in the first place. Um, I'm, I could ramble about this forever because I just think that it kind of was just like such a good, rem like just a clicking moment of like, wow, so much of what you stress out about and think about and in these words like causes you suffering, you just don't need to even go there because what value is it bringing you? And so even just having that model now is helping me to be more aware. Like it takes, just takes a lot of practice to not throw that second dart. You can't just overnight stop throwing it. But the only way to stop throwing it is to first be aware that you're throwing it in the first place. So now I'm just thinking like, I'm more aware of my thoughts of like, oh, now I'm, I'm agonizing over this thing where I could just let that thing have happened and move on. And so being aware of that second dart and getting better at not throwing it. Um, is something that's been on my mind the last couple of weeks and something that's helping me um, as we adjust into like changing settings every second. So that's enough of my ramblings for today. I could go, I might talk about book concepts for the next few weeks, honestly, because I have more to say on that. But otherwise, just ask me questions. I'm happy to talk about it in the comments. Um, follow or subscribe to my channel if you want to see like what's going on in future weeks. Basically, I just do this uh, talk about what I did and then talk about what I'm thinking. Um, and next week will be the end of the first full week in Chiang Mai. I love it here already. Um, and so hopefully I'll have lots to talk about about cool things we're doing. All right. Bye guys.